This is the weirdest thing I've ever done. Like, Question of the day. Do you enjoy best of three content? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments below. Ladies and gentle mages, civilians across the multiverse, welcome back to another episode with Man of Man. And today we've got a big juicer for you. We've got tier zero obscura obscura. And this deck has an 85% win rate. That is right. The almighty win rate that is so heralded. This is insane. I truly think that this deck is tier zero. If you can play this and pilot it correctly, it's like, man, it's just so hard to lose. You, you kind of almost have to get like mana screwed or the opponent has to be playing the same exact deck because as soon as you see green or red, I'm not even joking, you, you kind of know that you have the edge. Obviously, this to, to start off, this is a best of three. All of my content has been best of one thus far, but this is a best of three. I think we would switch it up. I do like to kind of play some best of three because I do feel like it is a little bit more competitive for better or for worse. They're, um, the, bad, the good news is you can achieve higher win rates if you're really focused on just trying to level up faster. The bad news is best of three is a lot more dry in, in my opinion. Like if you're really after like the fun of it, um, it's definitely a lot more dry. There's a lot less deck diversity. There's a lot more mirror matches. It's a lot grindier. So that is why most of my content is best of one because it is a lot more fun. And I enjoy playing best of one a little bit more, but you know, hey, we can switch it up today. The, take a look at this deck. This deck is absolutely insane. This is a, obviously a lot of what we've seen before. It is Esper. I've seen seeing a lot of Esper decks floating around. There is the, um, I've seen like a bunch of stuff. There's like the Triumphant Adventure I've been seeing a lot of, and I hate that card. I have no idea why people play that card. I think I think Croakies had a, had a deck list come out with it, so like everyone's been playing it. I personally think that card is trash in this deck. I don't know why people are playing it. Um, that's pretty much just the end of that. But other than that, look at this. This is card. This deck is so, so crazy. I'm not going to go over the cards because I've made decks that are kind of similar to this. Obviously, this one is a little bit different. But we've got the Underdog Plunder verse. We're running some Discard. We're running a little bit of, you know, Counter Magic. We're running a little bit of everything. This card is absolutely insane. I'm going, I can't, you can't really see it. Oh, I can't really move my guy. Uh, let's see. Boom. We'll move me over here. Just so you can kind of take a gander at the sideboard here. But, you know, we got a little bit of everything. I think these colors can toolbox and sideboard pretty much a little bit of everything for any sort of situation. So that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm going to go ahead and just at least showcase you. But I've got a really high mythic rank here. Uh, just from playing this deck out a lot. Because, again, it's just so good. So go ahead and leave me a like. The button looks just like this. Helps out the channel tremendously. Go ahead and subscribe if you have not already. Without further ado, let's get ready to vanquish some enemies. Billy Goat 74, Billy the Goat. Let's go ahead and keep this. All right, let's see what we got going on here. This is a uh, pretty standard hand. Three Rafine's Towers is not exactly optimal, but it's okay. It's okay. We still got this Abandoned Mire that I'm probably going to just play on curve so that we can Undercity Plunder on time, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's some things that we can draw. There's some things that could happen before then. Let's go ahead and jump our tower. We got the Rafine Avatar. We got the Rafine tower and then we all want the ravine sleeves but we do have obscura sleeves and that's pretty good so the forsaken crossroads is not really optimal just because again it comes in tapped but whatever we're gonna be able to undercity plunder and undercity plunder is like just one of the craziest like i can't say printed because it's never been printed it's an alchemy card but it really is insane so our opponent definitely is with it they know that esper is kind of insane they just know because obviously they're running esper colors here so they trade Undersea Plunder for an Undersea Plunder. I guess we'll give them a Rafine's Tower, and I guess we'll just... I, I never like to give them more than one card, because it's kind of a gamble anyway. I guess we'll drop Forsaken Crossroads for white. We, we're going to have to scry. We're going to have to get something a little bit better here. The Hive of the Eye Tyrant is not good. We're, we just need a little more support. We, we are going to need a, a Diviner of Fate or something. Right now, we're looking extremely weak. We're losing, we're losing card advantage by one. Oh, we're just getting we're just getting flooded really really unfortunate um we could also just cycle this thing if they don't play anything worth countering with the obscura charm so that's gonna be what, what we're gonna do here so they, they have their own refine tower this is a total mirror match and i don't like mirror matches the mirror matches are in my opinion my least favorite form of playing magic i i'm not even joking you it's definitely my least favorite so Triumphant Adventure, this, um, we could kill it, but I think I would rather just use Rafine's Tower. Try to get something a little bit more worthwhile. Um, Bind to Secrecy is actually kind of decent here. So that's actually something we could actually play. And we're not going to want to play the Herald of Vengeance until they attack us. So let's go ahead and pass. 
go ahead and pass here. We can always just go for Bind of Secrecy and counter something. Or we can just let this go through. I'm gonna let this go through. I know they get to what? They get to venture into the dungeon. Whatever. I am not running Triumphant Adventurer because I don't think it's that good. And I don't think it's good as a one-off. Like if you're not running Nadar, if you're not going all out dungeon, I just personally don't really like this card that much, but uh, I don't know, maybe we'll see. Maybe maybe I'm a maybe I'm a fish. Who knows? So my turn. Yeah, we're just gonna take that. Another tower, okay. If they've got a counter, I think that's just going to be it. I'm going to play this down. We're going to get the kill. These decks typically do not run. Um, they don't run like Jawari or anything, so I'm not really ever worried about that. We get Vanishing Verse, but it's not really that big a deal. So now i got to make a decision. Do we want to go for the Rafine's Tower or do we want to keep it? I think we're going to place this down just because we do have the Adventurer. If worst case scenario, we could use the Bind of Secrecy to conjure our own Adventurer. Oh, that's not good. I always decline. If we have cards that we want to use, we can always decline because, again, we can... It, it's just kind of luck-based, but, like, obviously they, they could just conjure a land. I think it's just not really worth it. So, did they conjure a land? They did conjure a land. Unfortunately for us, we draw a land. We are just getting flooded. <sighs> so much land. So much land. Pain, 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 pain. We'll go for charm. I think we could go for charm, then we could go for secrecy, and then copy our own adventurer. It doesn't seem that great, though. <sighs> All right. Underdog. Okay. Yeah, I think we're just gonna have to take this. I think we can wait for the underdog to go into the graveyard, and then we can use Bind of Secrecy. Perhaps we should have used the charm on the adventurer. So let's go ahead and use Bind of Secrecy now. Let's go ahead and conjure our own underdog. I think we can use this and start blitzing it in. I think that's a kind of a decent thing. We're, we use this charm. We should have used it before the adventure. It's not the end of the world, but in these matchups, every little slight misplay is so huge. So huge. Yeah, I think we're going to do this. It sucks to, to misplay like that, but um, we do give them a free goblin, which, again, is just really bad. But now we can go for a Rafine. Again, not worried about a Jawari or anything. And now we get to blitz this in. So maybe we can get some a little bit of firepower going here. We do get the connive, which is not that strong right now because it just goes right into the graveyard anyway. But at least we get to do this, you know? We get rid of their goblin. We get to draw, so that's great. We just get an Aganjo. The Aganjo is obviously not very good because we just don't need land right now. Define our fates, yeah, ugh. Oh, nausea, nausea, nausea. Nausea, nausea. Duress. Duress is no good. Duress is no good. Let's go ahead and swing in here, and I'm going to put this on the Rafine, just so they don't see the Iganjo coming. Maybe if they block, we can use the Iganjo on the, the Fates, because we have to kill this Fates. If we put this on the Underdog, it's just going to be too obvious. So I kind of like that. This is kind of sneaky here. Vanishing versus... Good against the dog, so I guess we got to keep that. We'll get rid of the duress, and I can't get rid of the Saganjo. I just can't. I just simply cannot. But then we could also... Mm. Yeah, we're going to have to do this. I hope... Awesome. So they're going to go ahead and block this. Now we're going to go for the Iganjo on this fate. We have to get rid of this Diviner of Fates because the Diviner of Fates just gives them unlimited value. I know because we play this card and it's pretty much the best card in our deck, I would make the case for. So Iganjo versus Iganjo. Okay, so they got a free land. Okay. So we at least get to draw. We do get a City Stalker Connoisseur. They take three. Okay. It's not great. I mean, like, we're, we're doing, like, okay. We have a shot. It's a very small shot, but uh, 
a shot is still a shot nonetheless. For second crossroads, let's see if they take... Ooh, they don't. They don't take the scry. They're going to take the wandering emperor and they're going to kill us. Okay. We started this fight. So let's pay the ward cost. That leaves them with only two mana. We can go for the underdog to kill the wandering emperor. My One, two, judgment three, four. Is final. That does I wish we get... Mm, okay. We do get a forsaken crossroads. Oh. Nausea. Pure nausea in this match. Pure nausea. I think discarding here is just so important. I think it's I think it's too important to, to not to not do this. We because the Wandering Emperor has kind of already done its big thing. We can use you can, you can use a Vanishing Verse or something. I think we just have to use City Stalker Connoisseur and, and just get rid of the biggest threat in their hand because again, getting rid of the biggest threat in their hand is really good. So get rid of the, yeah. See exactly because another Diviner is just so apocalyptically bad if, if they drop that thing. Let's. I don't think we go for crossroads. I think we use the blood token on the crossroads. Let's go for this. Then we still have the vanishing verse. Meat hook. Okay. Let's go ahead and pass the turn. Obviously, we still have this vanishing verse. I don't really want to use the vanishing verse on this wandering emperor. I want to use it on this tenacious underdog. So I think we're just going to stay put for now. So they're gonna create a, okay, they're gonna create a 2-2, two, two. okay. I won't miss you at all. Alright, so the Tenacious Underdog, this is going to be an easy Vanishing Verse spot. Easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We gotta get rid of this thing just so that it's exiled and not killed. Oh no. Nausea. Nausea. That's so sad. Apocalyptically sad. Okay. Plunder. Let's go for a plunder here. Maybe they don't want to give us our, their card. Maybe they, they do let us conjure a card and we get something crazy. They don't. But that should give us a, a, a way of diviner. And that's actually pretty crazy. To me, at least. Oh, man. We play this, we lose two life. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Only swing in with the underdog, obviously. I would prefer if they blocked. I don't think they're going to. They do not. But we do get the draw here. We have to we have to get some sort of card advantage at some point. So I know they, they we're gonna block this tenacious underdog with the city stalker connoisseur. Yep. Not great. Not great. They are gonna actually swing in here. That's actually We could do that. If they have what, like a wandering emperor, they just kinda win. If they have Wandering Emperor, they will, okay, this, they, they, get, they get flash in a 1-1 one, one counter on this and then just win. Which is kind of nerve-wracking. So one life is good, hey, one life is, is um, you know, <laughs> it's something. So we're going to go for Diviner of Fates here. I think this is kind of okay. We can, The Skyclave Apparition is not very good because we can't get rid of the Tenacious Underdog in the graveyard, which is unfortunate. We do get an Elspeth. Uh, we can't play that right now, can we? One, two, three, four. We can't. It's so sad. The Elspeth is really good, actually. But I think we have to get rid of the Skyclave Apparition. Hopefully we get, like, a Rafine or something. Another Apparition. Hmm. I think we kind of just have to put... I think we have to just put down the Skyclave Apparition. Just for like the, the, the board presence, it's it's awkward. It's very awkward. But I think we just kinda have to. I don't really want to put out the Meat Hook Massacre, and I kinda do want to attack here. When they don't have a hive of the eye tyrant, right? No hive, no hive. 
If we can take him down to seven. We've got two things to block this underdog, so I think we can we can actually do this. I said they don't have Wandering Emperor. They also they would have played it, I believe. A mire. <laughs> Okay, so they do get the Mire. So they get their, their dealer's choice of a Diviner. Okay. Like I said, we have one life though. Herald of Vengeance, they're gonna kill the Connoisseur. Okay. And a Diviner of Fates. What do we wanna do here? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. I f we're gonna need some help. Charm. Charm. Kill you. That doesn't do enough though, right? Just don't have enough land. We can mute the board, but that doesn't do anything because they can just blitz in the tenacious underdog. We go for uh, Elspeth. Elspeth's kind of okay here, I guess. We give something lifelink, but that doesn't do anything either. I think we have to go for Elspeth and just use the minus three and just pray. I don't. I don't really see what else we can do here. I won't let a few thugs threaten this city. You're safe now. We can give it to Rafine. I think we has to be Rafine, right? We're just kind of gambling that we got a Rafine anyway. And we get it. Does have a shield counter, which is nice. I think we have to put the I think we have to put the Mihook Massacre down for zero. We're not gonna want to clear the board. Because they can just have tenacious underdog, so I'm actually gonna put this down for zero. If we swing in here, they either take two. No, we can't do that. Okay. So they can still blitz in this underdog, so we can't leave ourselves open under any circumstance. It's not looking good. I think if they have Undercity Plunder, uh, we do get we do get that back, so that's actually, you know. We do get some sort of instant back, whether it be a vanishing verse or another obscure charm. Or Bind of Secrecy. I did forget about Bind of Secrecy. Can't forget about that. So, oh my gosh. It's... L they would need like a Vanishing Verse, and then they blitz in. A Vanishing Verse is lethal. Connoisseur, so they get rid of a Secrecy. Okay, we're still alive though. I mean, as long as we're alive, there's at least, you know, a chance, so... We do have to chump with the Rafine, but the Rafine, with the Rafine, we do have a shield counter. So we have a shield counter, so we just block this. That's fine. Boop. Explosion. Diviner. We're gonna need some sort of lifelink. Should we put Elspeth? I mean, should we put this on the Diviner of Fates? And give it lifelink, I wonder? It's not looking too bad. And we're gonna give this lifelink. Because we need life, we're at one life, so. This is your fight. Lifelink. Wait. Do we play the Diviner of Fates first or do we do we swing first? I think we have to kind of swing first. So, let's do that. Put this on the Diviner. I hope they don't have, like, removal of some sort. Land. Land is gross. Land is gross. We don't want land. We don't want land. 
Guess we'll just get rid of the land. We will, we will get the land back, and then we can use our Diviner of Fates again. I know that we... Man, going for the Diviner of Fates and giving it an extra counter would be kind of nice. I know that we're, we're obviously just going to die from the City Sucker Connoisseur, but uh, it is what it is. We need we need this life link here. So we go up to five. The Meat Hooks trade, which is nice. And then we're going to be able to play another Diviner. So Diviner number two. No land. Come on, baby. No land. Please no land. Okay, Tenacious Underdog is actually pretty good. We actually get our original Tenacious Underdog. We're going to go ahead and do that. Now, hopefully we get something that's not like a Rafine. Another Diviner. I mean, we can't complain. That's pretty good. So I think we just play down another Diviner. Diviner. And then another Diviner. I, I want to keep this Diviner, so we'll go ahead and get rid of the land. We do get another land back anyway, so we'll place this. I think we might want to just keep this in our hand just in case we get like a, a City Sucker Connoisseur for the blood token. We can use this land, and I think we're going to end the turn. Vanishing verse on our Elspeth, okay. I shouldn't have gotten involved. No, you should have gotten involved, Elspeth, because you probably you gave us a shot here. So City Sucker Connoisseur, but we're going to get two Diviner of Fates this way. Two Diviner of Fates triggers. Herald of Vengeance and another Rafine. Okay. We are at six life. Blood tokens. I Okay, so they're going to get their Diviner of Fates. Um, dang. Okay, so they, uh, they do get their Diviner of Fates value that way. Forsaken Crossroads. Bottom. Okay. That means they didn't like it. Obviously, that's good. You like to see that. And we do get a Marius Call. Oh, man. I think we got to go for the Marius Call, right? I mean, we don't have any lifelink or anything. We can also connive by swinging with the Rafine. Amiria's call doesn't... Oh man, we get indestructible. Let's go ahead and just do this. I'm gonna play small ball. I know that took a long time to decide, but we got another Amirius call, which is kind of funny. I guess we'll just discard one of these Amirius call. We'll probably get like an Undercity plunder because we're not running a ton of sorceries. So actually a duress, and then there's the Undercity plunder. I know we can just either bounce or we can trade with the City Soccer Connoisseur, but trading is pretty good because we have a Meat Hook Massacre and they don't. So again, this me these Meat Hooks are gonna be kind of, you know, they're gonna do their toll here. So I'm gonna go for the Undercity plunder now. I know they have the Diviner of Fates, but um, we don't really, really we don't really have like another move here. Did you get a land? Okay. Ah, man, I don't know. I mean, I just don't know what else we can do. We can go for the Herald of Vengeance. They're not gonna really I'm actually gonna drop the Herald of Vengeance. I don't think they're gonna be swinging on us. I kind of just want more damage in the air. So. Yeah, I, I guess that's fine. And now I'm going to go for the Duress, because now we got their discard out of the way. Now we can go for a Duress, and if they have something to discard, they're not going to be able to get the Diviner of Fates ability. It's just a land. I mean, it's not the worst thing, because the worst thing that it could be would be a creature. Because we can't discard a creature, and then they would just keep it. So this is good. They do use the Blood Token. That means they can't use the Blood Token this turn, and they can't get their Diviner of Fates value here. So this is not that bad. We're going to give them a Rafine. And I am actually going to give them double Rafine because, A, the Diviner. And I don't want to let them conjure something crazy. So I'm not going to, like, um, decline, and then they conjure, like, an Elspeth or something, and then we go, whoa. And then that turns out really, really bad. 
so they are just gonna pass. We do get a Wandering Emperor, and I think we are really close to sealing the deal. I think we're very close to sealing the deal. Let's go for the Tenacious Underdog here. I'm gonna swing off. Let's put it on the Diviner of Fates. Plunder. We take it. We take game one in an absolute... Woo, okay. So here's the here's the crazy part. This is this gets a little nuts because there's not like a whole lot of like what I would call edge in this matchup. So I think what we do is we kind of keep the meat hooks going. I think Gregor Trespasser is pretty good. Bind of Secrecy is really annoying. I don't think the Vanishing Verse is that good here because there's just not that many targets here. So let's go ahead and get rid of... Let's go ahead and get rid of the Vanishing Verse. I know it's... Yeah, I don't think that's that good here. We get... We're going to take the Orvar because obviously they've got Discard here. So let's get let's get the Orvar going. Trespasser is really annoying because they can't really one for one it. I don't think they are running... So they can't really Vanishing Verse it, I guess. Um... Didn't really seem like they're running too much removal. The Elspeth is a little bit slow. I guess we take away one of these. I guess we don't really need the Bind of Secrecy here. I'm going to take away one City Stalker just because of the Diviner. And then maybe a... You know, maybe that's a little bit too aggressive as the Trespasser. So let's go ahead and go back. Okay. I think that's okay. I don't think it's... I mean, sideboarding versus mirror matches. I mean, there's just not... There's not a whole lot of edge, like, you know what I'm saying? If you're, if you're going against, like, mono green or something, it's like, oh, you just, you know, get all the removal. Let's put an extra, you know, an extra Emperor, a Vanishing Verse, you know, something like that. If you're playing against, you know, a big control decks, you want to go for as many Bind of Secrecies as you can, you throw another one of those. But, like, in the mirror match here, we just kind of, um, there's just not a whole lot to go off of. So, waiting on your opponent, opponent is probably going to go first, I would presume. In my opinion, this is just my opinion, I don't really like mirror matches. I, I don't know if I said that already. I might have already said that. I'm losing my mind here a little bit. In my opinion, mirror matches are my least favorite way to play Magic. I do not like them. I just prefer if you have two different styles clashing. I don't know why, I just... You know, I mean, I don't... You know, Magic's still fun. It's not like I hate it, but I, I think mirror matches are my least favorite way to play Magic. For sure. Shout out to the Gengar mug. You gotta show it off. One of these days I will get a magic oriented mug here. Okay. So these first second crossroads, we can play this for black. So we'll be able to cast um, Duress and have a Bind of Secrecy on curve, which is kind of nice. Obscura Charm. So we need to get cast this Duress right away. So let's just go for black. And I'm not gonna go for the Scry. We're actually just gonna untap it. Yeah, let's go untap it. Let's take a peek at that hand. Let's see what we're working with here. Ray of Enfeelment's actually pretty annoying, but we don't have anything to worry about that just yet. So I think we actually take away the Wandering Emperor. We also have a Bind of Secrecy, so we could actually get rid of it. Yeah, let's just get, let's not get fancy here. Let's not get fancy. Let's just take away the Wandering Emperor. There's no reason to get fancy here. So they're gonna go with the Under Adventurer. Again, I'm not the biggest fan of this Adventurer. I, I just don't think it's that like great. We don't really have a way to get double white. I guess we can keep the Soaring City just just because. So I guess we go for maybe blue. Just because we want to have the, the, the Bind of Secrecy up here. And we just go for Undercity Plunder. So let's go into Undercity Plunder them. This adventure, I don't know. I just feel like it's just not that annoying. Especially if they're only doing, you know, venturing into the dungeon like once or whatever. So I should get rid of the Ray of Enfeeblement. Now I really wish we had our own Rafine. For second crossroads, I would love. Actually, I, I don't know how we're gonna get them to discard this uh, fiend, so they're probably gonna use this. Which dungeon do they go into? Which dungeon do they go into? Just lost mine of the pan pan fan delver. So they did put that on top, which is a little bit nerve wracking, but we do get the diviner of fate, which is really really nice. So let's go for white to complete our rafine colored trio here, and make sure we untap. Don't want to go too fast because I don't want to make a mistake. Let's go up the Diviner of Fates. Draw a card. Ooh, Elspeth is really good. I, I, Elspeth is good. I'm gonna get rid of the Rafine's Tower since we already have the color trio here. 
Plus, we can obviously replace itself. We just get a land anyway. We get the Abandoned Mire. These... These channel lands are really good because... Oh, Diviner of Fates. That's kind of yucky. Mm, I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. We're sitting like... Oh, oh they got rid of a Rafine. Why did they get rid of the Rafine? So I was talking crap about this in <laughs> the Adventurer, and uh, we're kind of we're kind of paying for it a little bit here. So they have first strike and death touch, so we're not gonna block. That makes no sense. But now we do get the Wandering Emperor, but we don't have enough white. Oh god. I think we just go for the charm and just kill this this Diviner of Fates. I don't want them to just keep accruing value, so. Maybe we wait. Maybe we wait on that. Now, I'm going to drop the Mire, because I think we're, we're pretty much good on um, resources here. So, I think we just do this and just kind of pass. It's not the strongest thing. I really wish we had enough white for the Wandering Emperor. We just don't, unfortunately. So venturing into the dungeon, put a 1-1 one, one on the Viner of Fates. I guess it's, I guess we can do this now. They might have their own Bind of Secrecy, but I think we just have to do it. If they have their own Bind of Secrecy, it's very, very, very bad. They don't, thank goodness. That is um, pretty good. It's pretty good. We're going to let this go through. We at least get rid of this Diviner of Fates. We have our own Diviner of Fates. It's pretty imperative that we get rid of that thing, though. So I'm going to go for... Ooh, do they have their own Wandering Emperor, I wonder? Ooh, I don't know. That's close. They might. They really might. If we drop the Soaring City... <sighs> we can go for the Wandering Emperor and then have a Bind of Secrecy up. I think that's pretty good. I... I um, actually, we can do that. We already dropped our land. Duh, what am I thinking here? I think we're gonna drop the Elspeth. I think we are. If they have the Bind of Secrecy, they would have already played it. I'm actually gonna get Every something out here. Is an opportunity to learn more about this city. I don't think we want to swing it. I think we're gonna do this and hopefully just try and search for a Rafine or something. Maybe another Diviner. Oh. This is my city. Oh. And I'm going to protect it. No, it's not good. No, it's not good. Uh, do we want white? How much white do we have? I guess we have an okay amount of white here. Oh, it's rough. That is rough. That's rough. That's really sad. We're gonna pass. If they have their own Wandering Emperor, I don't want to swing into that. So, we'll, we'll just kind of sit pretty here. Man, we get zero. We get, isn't a reason to we get zero value out of that Elspeth. We get a... I mean, I guess we get... We get... We ramped one. I guess that's something, but... Man, that's rough. That's not good. It's not how you win. Now they get to draw a card. I'm talking crap about this adventure. This adventure has been poking me all day. An Infernal Grass on our face. Oh, God. We couldn't get into the Bind of Secrecy. We could not get into the Bind of Secrecy. I guess we're just going to have to go for the Wandering Emperor now. Because I don't want them to, to go into another dungeon, I suppose. So I guess we'll just do this now. No, we can't do that now because they have a Goblin. So we can't do that either. All right, we'll end the turn. They do have a Diviner of Fates in their graveyard. Maybe we can conjure that. Maybe we can get a little crazy. Let's go for the Wandering Emperor. This is crazy. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna play the Wandering Emperor. I wanna get up to the five drops here. So we're gonna bait them. This is the weirdest thing I've ever done in my life. You're just underwhelming. This is the weirdest thing I've ever done in my life. I, I want them to attack the Wandering Emperor, and they do. So here's what we're going to do here. We're going to go ahead and exile the Triumphant Adventurer here. So we're just going to get rid of this thing. The Emperor is going to die, and we don't have a 4-drop in our in our graveyard. So we're going to make the Bind of Secrecy up into the 5, because we need 5 into the graveyard here. You're not much of a roadblock. You're not much of a roadblock. So they do get to venture into the dungeon. We're gonna kill the Wandering Emperor, but we specifically want the Emperor in the graveyard. So this is like the, again, 
This is the weirdest thing I've ever done. Like, okay. Yep. So the when the Wandering Emperor goes into the graveyard, we're gonna be able to get two cards from the Spine of Secrecy. Next time, then. Boom! Five out of five, baby. My turn. Hopefully they don't have a counter. If they do, I'm crying. I I'm literally gonna cry. But we do get a Diviner of Fates, and I think that's really good. We're gonna steal their Diviner of Fates here. We get it. To we get it. Okay. How do we want to do this? We need to get a Wonder. Wonder is actually okay if you've got a big board state. Gorging Vulture. The top three cards of your library, put any number of them in the graveyard, the rest of them. I think all these kind of suck. I think we're going to go for Wonder. We don't control an island, though, so I actually can't, we actually can't do that. We gain one life, mill four cards. I think it's just going to have to be... Oh my god, these are not that great. I guess it's just the, the Vulture? I mean, we don't really want cards in our graveyard here. I guess it's just going to be the Vulture, I guess. By default. Gosh dang, we still just... Man, we're just getting not a lot of luck here. But let's go for the Diviner of Fates. This is what we conjured. This is what we stole. And worst case scenario, we can just get rid of the Vulture for something we actually want. We do get the Orvar. Orvar is actually pretty okay. It's okay. I don't want to say it's great. It's okay. So I'm hoping for like a Rafine or another Fates here. We got a Graveyard Trespasser. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm going to drop this Graveyard Trespasser. Not worried about a Jawari. They have not shown Jawari. I know they're not going to drop a Jawari. So Graveyard Trespasser. Let's go ahead and get rid of a Diviner of Fates here. Let's go ahead and get rid of their best card here in their graveyard. We can do that. I want to keep these this tower. So I think we're going to play this for... Let's just go for black. I mean, I know we don't we can't play it. This is going to be able to cycle. This is going to be able to do that. If they have a discard, we, we use Orvar, and they're not going to like that. They just pass. They just pass. That has me a little nervous. That is that um We're gonna drop the Rafine. I'm a little nervous though, because I think they have a I'm just so nervous about the Wandering Emperor. But we do we do have a Soaring City. I mean we could use that on our own creature. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and use this on the, the fates. Graveyard Golden on this. And I think we're actually just going to get rid of our own creature because I want to just pop them for life. I just kind of want to be aggressive here. So let's go ahead and just pop them for life here. And we get, we're going to get this to go. Looks looks pretty good. I guess we'll go ahead and discard this and an Apparition. The Hive of the Eye Tyrant's pretty decent. But we can also use Rafine Tower to draw. I mean, yeah, we also get this back. So we get it. we're going to get more value from the Diviner of Fates back. Okay. So they, they can go for Hive of the Eye Tyrant if they wanted to and double trade with the Graveyard Glutton, but they end up not doing that. That's a lot of that's a lot of damage to take. That's a lot of damage to take. And we're gonna end the turn. We can go either go for the Soaring City now. Wandering Emperor. Okay. Let's see let's see which card they take here. I've learned much during my travels. Let me show you. Oh, a 2-2. Two -two. They're not gonna use the exile ability. We must protect the people. That's a... Mm, okay. Herald of Vengeance. Now what do we do? Let's go for the Soaring City. And do we want to protect the Glutton or the Diviner? I think we want to keep the Diviner. So let's actually protect our Diviner here. We discard, get more land back. These channel lands go very, very well. We lose our Graveyard Glutton. It's not great, but... um, It is what it is. They're gonna put this on the Herald of Vengeance. We need some removal strike here. Fast and strike hard. I think we're gonna put down the Forsaken Crossroads. Just to, well, no. I guess we kind of wanna. No, we're gonna do that. Let's put down the Forsaken Crossroads for the Scry ability. We'll just do White. White's fine. Scry City Soccer Connoisseur. Does the is the Connoisseur that good here? It's definitely not, like, bad. I guess we'll keep it. We go for a Marius Call. Or we can just go for Diviner Fates. I think we can just go for Diviner Fates. Get our City Soccer Connoisseur. We will discard, I guess, a land. I mean, I, I mean the Orvar... We already have our big creatures out. So I guess we just keep the Orvar. I guess we just get rid of the land. Con connive. More tower. Let's drop the City Soccer Connoisseur. We're going to get them to discard their best card and their, out of their two cards, which is pretty good. 
Another Herald of Vengeance. That is annoying. Okay, let's go ahead and say no. I don't want to attack because the Wandering Emperor can just exile us. They're gonna put this on the Vengeance. I don't think they're gonna swing Remember though. Remember your training. I don't think they swing, right? They are gonna swing. Wow. That is surprising, honestly. I think we just take this, right? I mean, if we. I'm just gonna take this. I don't want. I don't want to chump block here. So go down to 11. I don't think that's like really the end of the world here. The adventurer. We get our own Herald of Vengeance. So Herald of Vengeance meet Herald of Vengeance. That is wonderful. Let's go ahead and drop that right now. My vengeance for you. And we take it! And we take it! Tier 0. We are the master of the mirror match. Up to 20. So, man, this deck, I'm telling you what. This deck is absolutely crazy. I think it's close to as Tier 0 as it gets. So, hopefully you enjoyed this video and enjoyed my thought process in a more you know, best of three type of format. Um, I think the opponent probably scooped a little bit too early. I think it was still possible. Let's go ahead and look back at the, the view battlefield here. I genuinely think they still had a Wandering Emperor up. They still had this. I don't know. I mean, we probably would have won, but I mean, they, they did scoop a little, a little premature. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Go ahead and leave me a like. Go ahead and leave me a like. This was a grind, but that's what we do in best of three. Best of three is a grind. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. Man, a man. Out.